Welcome to Madrid. This series is all about experiencing the best food in the Spanish cut. A little bit of acidity and tanginess. We are going to unique and truly local tapas bars, in traditional marisquerias, and we will even visit some of the oldest restaurants in the world. Mm. Today we focus on the best Madrid food markets. And Spanish food markets are not just places where locals go to buy produces to bring back home. You come here to eat, to sample affordable and delicious dishes, to slowly sip vermouth and socialize with friends. To get stuffed with mouth-watering tapas and also explore international cuisine. So we start with Mercado de la Paz, which is a traditional food market located in the Chambéry neighborhood of Madrid. It's known for its wide variety of fresh meats, cheeses and other produce. One of the main reasons to visit Mercado de la Paz is the Spanish tortilla a Casa Dani, easily one of the top three Spanish tortilla in Madrid. It looks like a big fatty omelette. Every different place in Madrid does the tortilla a little bit differently, but essentially it's made of eggs, onions and potatoes. So with the tortilla you'll also get a little bit of fresh bread. And you can use the little fork which has been provided to kind of scoop a little bit of the tortilla. And you can see there is kind of a more solid kind of top. And then there is the very creamy inside, which is essentially made of potato and onions. Mm. Okay, this is amazing. Extremely creamy. Yeah, the top is just like omelette. It's not crunchy, but it's, it's actually soft. But there is an even softer inside made of this beautiful potato and such a strong oniony flavor. Like, looks like it could be a heavy kind of meal, but it's not. This is like an omelette on steroids. The beautiful golden outside and the creamy inside. The onion flavor really does it for me. Like, this is not like a simple it's not plain, that's the thing. It's, it's salty, it's savory, and the onion flavor inside just makes it perfect, really. Now, this little piece of bread is just too... looks too fresh to be ignored. You kind of want to open up this bread and make a little bit of space for the creamy tortilla. And then you've got a little bit of more crunch into your tortilla bite, which is actually... it's actually fine. Let's try this. I understand why they couple the, the bread with tortilla. The little extra crunch is really perfect. The deep fried potatoes, the olive oil, the minced onion, the whipped heads. Just simple ingredients, but you know, it's really the preparation they often make the difference. And Casadani, they're masters of this. Casadani starts selling these tortillas at 7 a.m. in the morning and during the course of the day, they end up selling more than 200 tortillas. And this is just a pincho. It's a small bite, will set you back of two pounds and 50 which is absolutely fine as a breakfast. Although this is a beautiful market to visit early in the morning, especially if you're coming here to try the, the famous tortilla at Casa Dani. In some ways it's a bit touristy. I think compared to the next one, the next market we're gonna see, that is gonna be a little bit more traditional, I suspect. So let's have a go and have a look. Not as big as the other markets in Madrid, Anton Martin is truly a local gem. It's a rare sight to find tourists here and the atmosphere is really authentic. People come here to do a degustación, a tasting of a specific local product. So all the Spanish prosciutto stalls that you see, all the queserías, the cheese corners, the pescaderia, which are local fishmongers, they all offer some degustaciones, where you can buy small plates and sample the variety of produces that they have to offer. And here at the queseria de Anton Martin, you can have a huge board of mixed Spanish cheese, plus a copa de vino, a wine cup for an incredible price of 1095 euros so i couldn't really skip this this is the most suave es un queso de cabra en la corteza va lavada con vino tinto queda el aroma del vino now look at this beautiful plate of cheese you can see we've got some fruits as well some nuts and obviously some very fresh bread a uh, copa de vino vino blanco white wine i'm not sure if maybe red wine would have been better but let's try the queso manchego which is the most famous one spain is obviously very famous for their cheese there are two varieties in particular that are exported all around the world one is the famous queso manchego from exclusively milk from the manchega sheep and i want to try it like this without using bread first It's salty, nutty and caramel kind of back taste. Mm. 
firm kind of consistency. Yes. The next cheese is called Murcia al vino or drunken goat cheese with its characteristic purple skin because it's been soaked in wine. Mm. This one is very creamy, not as salty as the previous one. A nice and smooth kind of texture, maybe a little bit of, of sweetness to it, but really, really good anyway. I think I should start be using a little bit of bread with this kind of cheese. It's toasted, right? It's, it's crunchy, fresh bread, and then you've got this little biscuit of bread. I've got a, a third kind of variety of cheese. Let's give it a try over a nice uh, slice of bread. <clears throat> This is for real cheese lovers, a really mature, strong flavor of goat cheese. The saltiness of this almost kind of burns your lips. I think it would be actually really good to chase it with some sweetness. Mm. And after all that kind of salty cheese, I really needed something to drink. The good thing about this market is you can, you can also find drinks and bars to have cervezas, but also cocktails. And I'm having really good margarita here while waiting for my oyster bar to open. We are the Vinoteca de Anton. The Vinoteca de Anton is a cocktail, typical cocktail drink for wine. It's a wine with uh, coconut, a lime, and uh, cinnamon. Next is uh, Angostura for herbal. An invention of Sebastian, and it's based on cinnamon, coconut, a white wine. You're not gonna find this cocktail anywhere else, so the Mercado Anton Martin is the place for you to enjoy this cocktail, and Sebastian is your man. Oh, it looks like the famous Lucia from the El Tarantin de Lucia, the famous oyster bar in Mercado Anton Martin, has arrived, so she's opening her shop. Oysters are famous in Spain. There is a particular region at the delta of the river Ebro. The sweet waters from the river Ebro and the salty water from the Mediterranean. This allows for the growth of particularly tasty oysters. Lucia is very passionate about oysters, as well as wines. So she suggested me a specific wine that I could try with the oysters. This wine is very good. The Valdeora Rium. I'm having a little bit too much alcohol. So I've got four different types of oysters. You know, a slice of lemon, but ideally you would probably want to try them without putting some lemon on them. Lucia also told me what's the sequence of trying them, you know, you go from number one to number four, just so that you can experience the sequence of flavors. So we're gonna go with number one. Mm. Oh my God, like you can taste the saltiness of the sea water, of the Mediterranean water in that one. Okay, let's go with the second one. The second one was more simple in taste, very smooth, very natural seafoody taste. Let's go number three. Mm. Oh yeah, number three is the Delta de Ebro. It's just an explosion of sensation in your mouth. Number four. Obviously, in the Spanish food market tour, I couldn't really miss the historic, 100-year-old, emblematic Mercado San Miguel, which in some ways represents the posh version of a Madrid market. Open till late in the evening, this is the place to hang out for your late afternoon vermouth and high-end quality tapas. Millions of people visit this market every year and it's considered the gastronomic temple of the city. Now, if you really want to live like a Madrileño person, at some point during the day, you'll have to have some vermouth. A Accompanied by some skewers of achetunas. This place is called La Hora del Vermut, which means time for vermouth. Wine macerated with spices. It's a perfect combination of sweet, bitter, and acidic, with an aftertaste that kind of lingers there in your throat. It's olive and vermouth is really traditional as a kind of an aperitif, an excuse for Madrid people to gather, to tell stories, to socialize. Obviously, I've got my selection of olive skewers. I think this one has got sun-dried tomatoes, cucumber. I don't know if this is cheese or tofu. And obviously, there have got some olives. And yeah, let's try. It.
Gracias. Los dos. Mm. Los dos. Uh, Get cheese. What? Uh, I, I think she was gonna. One of the skewers has got shrimp in it. Looks really beautiful. It's very difficult to no, no, technically no, no, approach have... this. The stick doesn't even appear. So all the stick is basically like stuffed with things, with olives, with shrimps, no, with sun dried tomatoes. Perfect. Two seconds. This is the dream aperitif. The tanginess given from the olive and the sweetness of the shrimps. Mm. Mm. So when you are in Mercado San Miguel, it's very difficult to ignore this tapas stall. It's called crab crab. Essentially, everything that they offer is about crab. So they've got crab sandwich, crab tarts, crab legs, and I wonder if the taste of the crab tapas matches the presentation, which is really awesome. Look at these colors, creativeness. Look at this mini crab burger. There's a crab bowl in the center and some seaweed salad. Looks beautiful. Let's give it a try. The burger is a bit dry, but the crab inside is pretty fresh and I love the touch of the seaweed. Gives it a little bit of sweetness to the burger. The second thing that I've got here is the squid and teriyaki sauce. You can see it's loaded with teriyaki sauce. Let's try this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, teriyaki sauce is you know, halfway between sweet and bitter. I don't know how to describe it, but the squid is nice and soft. And I've got this kind of third crab tart. This is like a three layers type of tapas, which is made of a baseline layer of uh, seaweed. And then we've got on the top of the caviar, and then the middle layer is, is the crab itself. Looks pretty tasty. The freshness of the ingredients really shines in this tapas. Now in case you are tired of small bites and small tapas and you want to go for a more kind of a filling meal, maybe based on wood fired roasted meat such as duck, beef or pork, you will find this stall here in the Mercado San Miguel. It's called Primital. They make some extremely juicy burger. But there is one specific burger that caught my attention and it's called Primital. It's a burger made of half a kilo beef rib meat. I couldn't say no to that. Now, unfortunately, Primital did not have their premier burger, which is a burger based on beef ribs. They didn't have it, so I went for and well, the standard, you would call it standard, but look how juicy this burger is. This is a beef burger with some bacon and uh, barbecue sauce. Looks extremely juicy, like juices are flowing outside of the bun. Yeah, I'm ready to bite into this bad boy. Mm. Oh my God. This is one of the most juiciest burger I've ever had. I, do, I did not need to chew into this. The bun is extremely soft. The burger just disintegrates in your mouth. Mm. This is pretty much the definition of a gourmet burger. burger. The bacon is crispy. The beef cooked medium raw, which makes the burger even more kind of soft. Yeah, this is a burger. It's not cheap, but it's a good burger. So what happens when a three-star Michelin chef decides to venture into the world of ice cream? The answer is this rocambolesque ice cream parlor, which is directed by chef Jordi Roca. I've heard good things about this place and as an Italian lover of handmade fresh gelato, I needed to try this. So what I've got here is a small cup with gelato at the flavor of panettone. As toppings, I've chosen some vanilla marshmallow, some blueberries, and some hazelnut, caramelized hazelnut, so. Panettone means large bread, and it's this Italian sweet bread that's typically enjoyed on Christmas. It has a buttery taste with notes of sultanas, candied fruits, and citrus and zest, maybe slightly tangy. I'm not really sure this gelato captured those flavors. I think it mostly tasted like vanilla, but anyway, it surely was a creamy and sinful treat. That's all for today in Madrid. Uh, make sure you give it a like and I'll see you in the next video.